Hello dear students, let's see this uh, very good question of geometrical optics from IITJ 1995. That time there was no advance or J main, but I have written advance because its level is that of the current J advance level. It was a revolutionary question in a sense that for the first time a question of a refractive variable refractor index was asked and uh, later on J uh, advance 2017 a similar question was asked. So let's read the question. A ray of light traveling in air is incident at a grazing angle, angle of incidence 90 degree on a long rectangular slab of a transparent medium of thickness 1 meter. The point of incidence is the origin, the medium has a variable refractor index given by ky power 3 by 2 plus 1 and whole power 1 by 2 where k is a 1 unit. Refractor index of air is 1. And we have to find the relationship between the slope of trajectory of the ray at a point b x comma y in the medium and the incident angle at that point obtain an equation for the trajectory y x of the ray in the medium determine the coordinates x comma y of the point p where the ray intersect the upper surface of the slab air boundary and indicate the path of the ray subsequently before explaining how to solve this question, let me uh, tell you a concept of uh, composite parallel glass slabs. Suppose these are a few composite parallel glass slabs and the refractor index of the outside media are this is say, N1 and this is N5 and refractor index of these uh, media are say N2, N3 and N4 and some ray is incident here like this. It get refracted and bend inside something like this and then something like this and uh, something like this and finally emerges outside. And suppose this angle of incidence here is theta 1 and here angle of refraction is theta 2. Next angle of incidence will be theta Two also because these two are the parallel normals and then suppose this is theta 3 so this will also be theta 3 suppose this is a theta 4 this is also theta 4 and this is a theta 5 so let me apply Snell's law between n1 and n2 interface so that would be n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta and then let me apply Snell's law between n2 and n3. So that would be n2 sin theta 2 is equal to n3 sin theta 3. And similarly here n3 sin theta 3 is equal to n4 sin theta 4. And uh, here n4 and n5 interface. So that will be n4 sin theta 4 is equal to n5 sin theta 4, theta 5. And lastly, suppose let's take a simple case of F and that will be used in one of the part of this question. So if N1 is equal to N5, so here this N1 is equal to N5. So that would mean sine theta 1 is equal to sine theta 5. That would mean the theta 1 is equal to theta 5 mean the incident ray and the emergent ray will be parallel. And uh, more importantly, suppose I can apply here. Let me uh, remove all these things remove all these things i have no information about whatever what the uh, refractor index of these slabs are but only thing i know that these slabs are parallel so uh, still i can apply snell's law directly from here to here let me draw this normal this normal is like this so uh, the the overall equations are this so i can write n1 sine theta 1 is equal to and 5 sine theta 5 so by passing all these slabs i can directly apply snell's law between this surface and the surface as if there is nothing inside so snell's law i am directly applying between n1 and n5 irrespective of whatever refractor index are there but the only condition is that the media there should be the parallel media so that is what we will be using to solve the answers so let's solve the first two parts and this is uh, as it is given this is the slab of variable refractor index n 
this refractor index n is varying with y it is increasing uh, with increasing y like if I, we are going up the refractor index is increasing so we can model the system like uh, this whole slab is made of so many slabs and its refractor index is gradually increasing as we go up uh, <clears throat> approximate model but here right now what i am taking that it is increasing but discreetly so for some length it has a sum and then it, it increases but actually it is increasing continuously but this model will help us to understand how the uh, ray will go inside so it is given that it enters the medium at uh, 0 comma 0 it was written in the question so this is a 0 comma 0 and uh, the normals to all these slabs are like this the normal here is like this the normal here is like this so the, all the normals of the slabs are like this you can think like that so here the normal here the normal is like this so this is the normal here this is normal here and the ray grazingly enters mean the angle of incidence is 90 degree this is the ray that enters here this is 90 degree and suppose these refractor index are increasing uh, little by little suppose this is a 1.1 then 1.2 1.3 1.4 these are refractor index just to get some idea so as uh, here the refractor index was one air so it is going from air to another medium a uh, little bit more denser 1.1 so the ray will bend towards normal a little bit because just slightly increase so the inside the ray the first refraction the ray will be something like that then again the above medium is a little bit more denser the, so the ray will further bend towards normal and similarly the ray will keep on bending towards normal like this like this like this like this like this so in every slab the ray is uh, traveling uh, in a straight path but as it enters to the next slab it slightly bends if the thickness of these slabs are very small so it will appear that this ray is continuously bending along a curve and that is what happened if in case of this discreetly varying refractor index there is a continuously varying refractor index media like this uh, here also n is increasing with y so in place of this if we have a this type this kind of a medium which is given like this so the ray inside the ray inside will continuously bend and uh, it will go like this it will go like this and we have to find the equation of trajectory of this path like this it will bend in a continuous fashion suppose this is the path and it will come outside and that that we we have to see in one of the option so suppose there is a this point b this is a point b and this point has a coordinate say it's given this point b has coordinates x comma y so we can think of two slabs uh, from here to here like this think of this part From here to here, there are uh, so many uh, little little slabs of very little little uh, thickness, and the uh, refractor index is gradually increasing. So you can think the system as a made of an infinite number of parallel glass slabs. So normal here is like this. This is normal here, and this is normal here. And suppose this point is A, so we can directly apply Snell's law between A and B, as just I had explained. And for that, we need the angle of uh, incidence or a fraction so i'll make a tangent here suppose this is a tangent at point b on the ray and this tangent makes a angle theta from the positive x-axis so if this is theta so is this theta this is theta and here this is a this is normal so at this point the angle of incidence at this suppose this is a level y at this point the angle of incidence is say i and if this is i so this is also i so i plus theta is equal to 90 degrees so i is equal to i is angle of incidence at p so theta is equal to 90 degree minus i so if i take 10 on both sides so 10 theta 
would be uh, 10 90 degree minus i and uh, 10 90 degree minus i is obviously cot i and what is 10 theta 10 theta is the slope at b the slope and that's what we have to find a relationship between the slope of trajectory and the incident angle so our answer is the slope slope that is 10 theta and that slope we will be needing in another form and that slope can also be written as dy by dx and that is cot i but for this part answer i will say just that tan theta is equal to cot i that is the relationship between the slope and the incident angle so now i'll uh, for the part b i will apply snell's law between a and b so what will be that at a just before at n is 1 so that will be 1 into angle of incidence here is a 90 degree 1 into sin 90 degree is equal to uh, refractor index at this level is n so i am just writing n later i'll put the value n into sin i and sin i is cos theta sin i is sin 90 minus theta so 1 is equal to n cos theta so cos theta is 1 by n I mean i can draw a diagram like this suppose this is a right angle triangle this angle is theta this is 90 degree this is 1 and this is n so uh, this perpendicular will be square root of n square minus 1 so if cos theta is 1 by n so 10 theta which is dy by dx will be square root of n square minus 1 by 1 so that will be just square root of n square minus 1 and look from here this 10 theta this n here k is 1 so if i write n square so n square will be k is 1 so that will be y power 3 by 2 minus 1 so n square minus 1 is y power 3 by 2 and its square root so that will be uh, y power 3 by 4 and this is a differential equation so integrating it with a suitable limit i will get the equation of trajectory so taking y on same side so that will on rearrangement that will become y power minus 3 by 4 into dy is equal to dx and one point of the trajectory is a here x is 0 y is 0 so one point is x 0 then y 0 and another point is b where x is x then y is y so the left hand side integration will give me y power 1 by 4 divide by 1 by 4 and that will be also after putting limits the left hand side will be just x so y power 1 by 4 will be x by 4 and uh, taking fourth power on both sides so y will be x by 4 power 4 and that is the equation of trajectory for the ray inside the medium so now in the part c we have to determine the coordinates x1 comma y1 of the point p where the ray intersects the upper surface of the slab air boundary the ray enters the medium like this the angle of incidence was 90 degree and uh, travels along this path something like this the equation of trajectory of the path inside slab we just got y is equal to x by 4 power 4 so here at this point where the uh, the ray is just going to leave for this point is p its coordinates are x1 comma y1 so y1 is a y1 is actually the height that is a t so y1 is a 1 meter so if we put y1 is equal to 1 meter so we'll get 1 is equal to x by 4 power 4 so take the fourth root and x has to be positive so we'll get x is equal to 4 meter so the required coordinates are x1 y1 are uh, 4 meter comma 1 meter now this is the point from where the ray will just emerge out or will intersect indicate the path of the ray subsequently so uh, here the medium is uh, air and just outside the medium is air and in between we can think of this uh, unif this variable refractor index medium as a made of an infinite number of the parallel glass slabs 
and in the parallel labs labs we can directly apply Snell's law between two levels and just in the beginning I told you that if the this medium and this medium are having the same refractor index so the emergent ray will be the parallel to the incident ray so the emergent ray here will be parallel to the incident ray like this so I will say that the 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 path subsequent path will be the parallel to the slab so the ray grazingly enters the slab and the ray will leave also grazingly just touching the slab and it will go outside so that's how the subsequent path of the ray will be thank you